So let us start with deadlocks, guys. Deadlock is dead simple. I think that's a, a great example I can give you. So yesterday we have seen an example of creating a lock. We created a lock inside the database. So now I'll show you. Uh, let us reproduce our issue like yesterday. We were trying to insert into a table where the value was one and then the text was val one. Uh, this is some, I mean, this was something we were trying to insert via the user A. Or we can also call it a session one because we had two sessions, right? And then within our session two, or user B was also trying to insert the record inside the table with the same value, right? So, what happened exactly for the session B when you hit enter? It went on a wait. Perfect. This is a situation where uh, the user A is holding the lock for the record one and user B does not know what has to be done. And guys, this is the exact case with insert update or delete. All right. So of course we have already seen the example of insert. Let me get into uh, an example of update for deadlock so that it will make more sense. You will get a variety in the example let us assume we have the test table okay test table and test table is having id number this is a primary key and this is the value column all right so id number is one value is val one id number is two val two and all right we have multiple rows but we'll stick to these two records now assume that user a issued a command like update update val equal to guys i'm not writing the exact sql i'm just trying to keep it simple val equal to 1111 where id equal to 1 all right this is being executed by user a now user b is executing this command update val equal to double two double two where id number is equal to two right so if you look at these records okay i'll create a column lock owner so who is the user who is owning the locks for the records for record one the user a holds the lock because over here you can see the id number is one so the record where id number is one this will be locked and the lock owner will be user a because user a issued this command for record two the user b will be the lock owner right over here we are going with row level locks because both the users are trying to update different records at this stage assume that user a now wants to update the record two because user A doesn't know somebody holds the lock for this record. So what user A will issue, user A is trying to issue update val equal to double two double two where ID equal to two. Now once the user hit enters, what will happen? Can anyone tell me the answer? Guys, none of the users committed or rolled back the data. So don't get that in, in between. So what will happen at this stage? Hello, it, it, it's going to throw an error. Uh, it will not be able to insert. He okay. will not be able to, he wouldn't be able to update. But uh, why? Because, because user B has not done any commits or mm -hmm. rollover. Okay. Mm -hmm. so he, he's going to wait. A will be waiting. I don't. Right. Yes, it, I will don't. Wait for, it will wait for user B to either to commit or roll back. Only then the user A, that the value called 222 will get uh, updated or... Uh, Correct. Yes. That's right. That's right, guys. So the thing is like over here, Ikechi, see this command. It's very simple. Whenever you are confused, uh, the thing is like you have to understand if somebody is already working. We see that user B is working on ID number two, right? So 
with I, I don't know why people get confused but you need to be very clear did the user commit or roll back it's very simple only three conditions did the user roll back did the user commit or did the user disconnect from the database these are the only three scenarios where the locks will be released so you don't have to be confused right now the lock is hold by whom the user b correct so user b holds the lock user a is trying to update the record what will happen the user a has to wait because user b needs to release the lock so that user a will get the lock so in any insert update delete command the first thing that happens is acquiring the lock so the user who is working on the record will acquire the lock in this case user b is already acquiring the lock on id number two and the user a is trying to update the same record where id is two so user a has to wait until b commits rollbacks or disconnects from the database now in this situation what is happening is this session goes on wait all right over here the session b the user b now believes that i mean uh, the user b wants to update the record one so update while sorry while equal to one 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 where id equal to one now what will happen tell me come on ekg at this yes. stage Yes, if if um, user A has not committed a rollback, mm -hmm. the user user B is gonna be on wait. Okay. Now, if you it say like, a, yeah, it became a deadlock. Now it is both are trying to get other lock. Right. So, in, just for others to know, in this case, what happens is both the sessions are waiting for each other to release the lock. user a is waiting for b to release the lock on record 2 and user b is waiting for user a to release the lock on record 1 and this will continue infinitely now this is a big problem inside the database and this situation where one user is waiting for the other user to release the lock when two or more sessions are waiting for each other to release the locks this situation in, is known as deadlock now the question is what do you have to do in a deadlock situation as a dba first thing you do nothing because oracle is smart enough and oracle can detect deadlock within 3 seconds all right so for the user b when the user b hits enter the user session will not be waiting rather oracle will say deadlock so oracle will throw an error saying like deadlock situation has occurred but if oracle is throwing error what will happen to this session because this command is still waiting for session b right so what will happen to this command over here the oracle gave an error right deadlock detected okay this command is ignored but what will happen to this command does uh, i mean or oracle will give the lock to the user a or what will happen that job will be completed mm -hmm. any other guesses that will still continue waiting right see guys this command what it needs it needs user b to commit rollback or disconnect right but nothing of that sort happened in the session b session b gave an error for an update command because there was a deadlock situation but this command from user 1 will continue to wait because user b still did not commit or rollback now what i i mean i think uh, i would suggest you guys i can show you an example but i think this is a very simple example i want you guys to uh, create this scenario in your system it is very simple first uh, try to update a record like this then run in the second session run this command so that each user is getting a lock on a different record and from 
the session one, try to update the record where the lock is hold by the other user. And then same way you execute another update, which is trying to acquire the lock, which was run in step one. So what you do is like create a test table exactly like this, just to understand how deadlocks work. And what you do is just identify and work on the deadlocks. I think I also have a document with the same example, not document, I think the article. I'll show you the article quickly and then deadlocks. I think it is how to work with removing deadlocks in Oracle. So I gave the same example, like uh, there are two records we are inserting in a table, we are committing, and then we are opening a new session, we are updating the uh, one record where ID is one, we are updating in a second session where ID is two, the first session holds lock on ID one, second session will hold lock on ID two, and then you try to update from session one on session two record, from session two, session one, and this will encounter a deadlock. You can see in first session statement will be continue to waiting. So how do you resolve the deadlocks? This is important enough. First of all, deadlocks are very simple. Whenever there is a deadlock, Oracle knows it and Oracle will uh, detect it immediately and then throw an error saying like aura triple zero six zero. So, what you can do is ask the session getting deadlock error like aura 060 uh, to issue either commit or rollback. Now in this case guys, if this user B is saying like, Hey, I'm getting deadlock error again and again, I'm trying to update a record. You ask the same user, Hey, can you actually issue a commit or a rollback? Because the user B is getting deadlock error because the user A is waiting for user B and user B is waiting for user A. So if the user B commits, what happens is user A will no longer wait for user B and then you can ask the user B, hey, once you commit, you rerun your command and then it will execute. You ask the user B, the person who's getting the deadlock error to commit or roll back, all right? So that's the first step or you ask the waiting session to kill the SQL transaction. What you can see is like uh, the user A, th this is the waiting session, right? The user A is waiting over here. So you can ask user A, a like, hey, can you stop the SQL query or can you quit your SQL query? Uh, maybe they can press Control C, Control X on their terminal, but sometimes these are not the queries that humans will run. These are run by the application. So that point of time, it's hard for the waiting query to be quit. But in general, I'm saying like in your test scenario, you can quit the user A and say that, hey, can you kill the SQL that you're running? And then what you can do is, uh, whenever there is a deadlock situation, the problem with deadlock is guys it occurs because of a poor design of application so the application team they design the application in a way where multiple queries are trying to update delete insert and then there is a lock conflict and because of which you might see a lot of deadlock errors or our triple zero six zero in the database alert log so what do you do in this situation your job is whenever you see this error of course, the solution I already gave, you ask the uh, session which is getting deadlock error to commit or roll back, but your job as a DBA should be to inform the application team, hey, can you modify your code or your application so that there are frequent commits in case if they are trying to insert a bulk load or something, or you ask them, can you uh, kind of like uh, make sure the sessions are not waiting for each other? And then you kind of like give your own recommendation saying like, what are the situations when deadlocks occur? Because sometimes um, the application team or the developers, um, of course, nowadays all the developer are, developers are smart enough, but still sometimes you as a DBA need to tell them what is deadlock 
when it occurs so that they themselves can review their code and modify it. So I would suggest like whenever there is a deadlock situation in real time, whenever you see this alert, quickly connect with your application team. So they actually get, they will get to know, okay, exactly at 2 p.m. the database is getting a deadlock error. That means exactly at 1.59 uh, or we can say it like the code that is running exactly at 2 p.m that is causing the problem. So that way it will help your application team to redesign the code, which will, or which can technically avoid the deadlocks inside the database. So deadlocks are not good for your database. Try to avoid it as much as possible. And if you're working in real time, definitely you will uh, be seeing a lot of deadlocks most of the times. So for deadlocks, as I mentioned guys, try to create a deadlock. This is a good uh, article. You can produce a deadlock for your test scenario. Look through the deadlock and see how can you understand through deadlocks.